Today we're getting ready for Winter Storm Harper. It's gonna bring us some pretty cold temps and some ice and snow. We're gonna get everybody set up and ready for that. So we have no surprises, no shortages of anything in the farm. Closing them in. If you've ever tried to like set up friends on a date or something, oh, I know this great guy, he's really nice. He's a little smelly and aggressive, but he'll make great babies. Yeah, that's what's going on right now. And so far it hasn't been a great, you know, set up. But that's probably just because Lacey's not ready yet. So we're watching each day, we've been putting them together observed because we don't want any surprise kids each day we're just trying to see how, how what's her reaction what is she doing you'll actually see them fight butt heads a little bit because the doe wants to make sure that the buck is gonna be a good you know good genetics good strong buck healthy buck so she'll fight with him a little bit maybe butt heads before they wind up breeding so fighting is a good thing. Right now it's mostly just been running, which also is a sign that we could be getting close to her being an estrus. Do they call it estrus with the doe? That's a deer term, maybe it's a buck, maybe it's a goat term also. Being in heat, how's that? I have something in my teeth. So on the docket for storm prep, we like to fill up all the waterers to the brim. In case the power were to go out, it's good to have a couple days worth of water. Make sure we have enough feed in the feed room to last us uh, at least a week. We took care of that the other day as you saw. Yeah, throw mm. some hay down. Work on fencing because of the ice that's coming. Ice is really bad for this electric fencing we've got up. It'll just drag it down and wear out the fencing. So we're gonna pull it all up and bring it all inside. We figure at this point in the winter we're only gonna get more and more ice and snow. Ladybug won't be able to eat any of the grass so. We'll it's take, time. Yeah, it's time. And finally, make sure the stalls are really clean because if it's really crummy weather, we like to bring all the animals in. And the longer they're inside, if we start them off clean, the longer it will take for them to get it all dirty again. So a day or two. So we got a lot of work. Let's get started. I mentioned recently I've been reading a book called The Lean Farm. Uh, I got it on Kindle on my phone so that whenever I'm sitting around and I don't have something to do, which is not very often, but usually at bedtime, I can pull this book out. This book, Lean Farm, is by Ben Hartman. And the whole idea behind the book, it takes the concept of lean production, which is something that's used in a lot of factories, and it applies it to farming uh, without turning your farm into a factory farm, the, the negative things that we don't like about factory farms. The first chapter is called Every Tool in Its Place, and it talks about the five S's, uh, five lean principles uh, that will help you just kind of organize your farm and help things move quicker. I'm not going to tell you all five of them. If you want to learn all five, you can uh, click the link below and actually get the book yourself. But the first one, the first S is sort. And what that means is to go through your barn, your farm, everywhere that you're working and pick the things you like that you use that are good and then get rid of all the other stuff you've been keeping around because you might use it one day. And they really encourage finding multiple uses for one tool instead of having like three or four tools that do the same thing. Today, while we're all out working in the barn, what I've done, I've gathered up all the tools that we could possibly use to clean the barn. Uh, here we have a couple different, you know, pitchfork style tools. We have a bunch of different shovels just everything we could possibly use and I'm letting the kids clean their stalls and pick the tools that they like. The ones they like, the ones they actually use are keepers and that way every tool is chosen for what we actually use.
What did you do, kid? Me and my brother teamed on it. Oh, everywhere here. Wow. That looks so clean. Who taught you to clean so good? Um, Mom. <laughs> That's the right answer. The second S, set in order. Every tool on your farm should have a place. It should be in its place or in the hands of a worker. There's no third option. Use the tool, then put it back home. Today, I'm going to, just for this little area of the barn, do that. The tools that we actually use to clean the barn are gonna stay in here in our feed room and they're gonna each have their own place, their own spot where they go. So the kids take the tool, they clean their thing, I take the tool, I clean the stall, and then it goes right back where it belongs. So we never have to go looking for tools. So let's dive into sorting and setting an order today. Two principles of the five that you can find in that book, The Lean Farm. You got a, you got a full cart there, kid? Correct. Oh man, right in the gator. I'll back the gator in. All right. Ah, we can put it up in. Got the flat back bucket mounted, and it's plugged in, heated, keep Quinn's water warm. Good. I don't know what this extension cord was here for. We didn't put it up, but we're taking it down. I don't want Quinn getting wrapped up in it. I've said it a lot in the past how uh, of all the work for farming, like cleaning and shoveling, and there's a lot of manual labor that's repetitive, and I've honestly stated that's not my favorite thing to do. This is. This is one of the things I love about homesteading infrastructure, uh, improvements in your barn, building systems that make your life easier. Uh, today, hanging this goat waterer, uh, removing some you know, mess. We got some extension cords that are in this room that don't need to be in here. Uh, clearing them out, improving our, uh, you know, getting tools hung on the wall. Anything that improves your everyday chores, your everyday work in the barn, infrastructure improvements, I love doing this stuff. It's it's problem solving. You see a problem, it's not a big problem. It's not, you know, solving world hunger. But it's a little problem, you can fix it in a couple hours and it feels so good. I like to hang these buckets, again, the, even the feed buckets, by a fence staple, but you can't do it directly to the bucket because then you can never take this bucket, clean it out, dump it out. You want to be able to clean and dump out your buckets. So always hang by a clip instead. And there we go. Little fix it up projects like this, improvements in your infrastructure. Uh, one of the big lessons in Lean Farm is to look at your everyday chores, right? What you're doing every day and if you find waste, 
something you're doing that wastes time, that wastes effort, if you have to do something twice, uh, eliminate the waste. So here's a perfect example of where I found some waste in my daily routine. The buckets in this stall were on the floor, and I, every day I would come in, I'd have to come over here, unlock the bungee or the belt for this stall, slide the door open, walk over here, pick up a bucket, fill it with feed, put it back where it belongs, fill the, drag the water over, fill it with water, and then leave. In that watering and feeding process, watering and feeding still needs to be done, but all those extra steps, going and grabbing the bucket, opening up the bungee, opening the door, those were waste. extra effort and time that I don't need to spend every day doing the chores twice a day. I could be spending that time actually enjoying my animals, petting them, grooming them, <laughs> taking them on a walk, not just doing monotonous chores. So what I've done is I've made it now where the water and the feed bucket are attached to the wall and watch this. Short time, I can fill, feed, and water without unlocking the stall. I can do it all from right here. It streamlines my workflow in the morning. That on five stalls would save a lot of time. You know, multiply that twice a day, seven days a week, 365. That's a lot more time I can spend doing things I want to do with these animals or in this barn and not just in waste. Less waste, more production, that's a lean farm. Link below, you're really gonna enjoy the principles in the lean farm book. It'll speed up and make you more efficient. Got our heated bucket plugged in, all ready to go. It's gonna keep our water from freezing. Some have mentioned in these videos where we've shared our heated buckets uh, that that uses a lot of electricity, that can be expensive, and it's true. These do run off electricity. You need electricity in your barn for them to work, but they make life a lot easier. It can get expensive to run a heater all winter long, so this little guy we just picked up is going to ease the expense over the winter time. This is a really cool item I found on Amazon. This is a thermo cube. So what it is, it's a thermostat built into a power outlet, and the way this works, it comes on when the temperature goes below 35 degrees. If it goes above 35 degrees, it shuts things off. So if you're using heat lamps, tank de-icers, engine heaters, heat tape for you know pipes, whatever it is, the thermostat built into this will activate it when there's a danger of freezing. But on those warmer days when you don't need to be spending the money running heated water buckets or anything else in your barn for heat, it'll automatically shut off. One less thing for you to think and worry about. I like this model because it had two plugs for the price of one. A couple of these I found on Amazon only had one plug. So the other thing I like about this is it's this quick. Boom. 10 seconds and you're running a more efficient gator. In 10 seconds, you now have a more efficient barn that's gonna cost you less money and make your life easier. There's very few things in life that in 10 seconds can improve your life that much. That little guy, I think it's like $15, totally worth it. So link below for that guy. The thermo cube. There it is, every tool in its place, just like it says on the lean farm. <laughs> 
talk about having the tools, only the tools you need and everyone in its place. There are a few repeats here, but four of us come out to the barn to do this work all at once. So we need to have, you know, four scraping shovels and a couple brooms. So we can't get too lean, otherwise it'll slow down our efficiency. Now, another great tip that you'll find in the book Lean Farm is once you've found your spot, you'll notice the organization here. We got pitchforks to the left, brooms to the right up top, and at the bottom it's all the scraping tools. They suggest taking a picture of how you want it exactly where the tools belong, or like spray painting an outline or something, but I'm not gonna spray paint an outline on the inside of this stall. Uh, take a picture and then actually post that picture on the wall, like put it up on the wall there, and that way anyone brand new farm worker, one of your kids, your wife or husband, whoever, when they come in the barn and they take that tool, at the end of the day or as soon as they're done with that tool, they bring it back to the empty space where it belongs and they can quickly look at that picture and say, oh, it goes right here. I just thought, of, I just, I was just like, oh, so you mean like put signs up? That's right. You follow the, the 10 year old rule. A 10 year old should be able to walk into your barn and know where everything belongs, where everything goes, and should be able to see if there's something missing. I think we should call it the seven-year-old rule. What do you think? Yeah. Because I think a seven-year-old could handle that too. All right, we're done. Our stalls are clean. We got some organization. The waters are all up and filled. We are, uh, we're pretty much done here. What do you think? We gotta just clean up and put our tools back where they belong. <laughs> I think we already done that. All right. Always in our head. Coming up this week on Homesteading, there's a threat headed our way. Severe weather threat brewing. <laughs> Midwest tracking timing your threat. Threat, threat. It's really aggressive weather app. So Kay does the only logical thing to prepare. Bakes a cake. And the moment you've all been waiting for, we get the results in from Ladybug's pregnancy test. They're so good. We got the email whether or not Ladybug is pregnant. Okay, just do it. Is she pregnant? Find out this week. Tune into our videos every morning as soon as you wake up. So far, I'm really enjoying this book, The Lean Farm. If you're interested in it, click right here. You can read a free sample of it, see if you like it.